Another comment that I repeatedly got on yesterday was Tabitha. Did you see Rachel Maddow's segment on Monday night? You have to see Rachel Maddow's segment on Monday night. You have to see it. You have to talk about it. Y'all know I have not been watching mainstream news media. I have not been watching those who I consider to be my favorites, which is Rachel Maddow and Lawrence O'Donnell and Joy Reid. I have completely shut down from mainstream news media. The only news media that I watch is the Midas Touch Network and Roland Martin. And then I watch a, a lot of other favorite political news commentators over on YouTube and TikTok. I stay tuned in to trending topics over on Twitter. And that's how I'm able to stay abreast of what's going on. But I listened to y'all. I went right on over to the YouTube the tube, and I found Rachel Maddow's segment from Monday night. And Rachel Maddow's segment from Monday night pretty much confirmed for me that the coup attempt that took place on January 6th, it has been continuing. It didn't stop. It just has been resurfacing in a different form. Here's what Rachel Maddow had to say. But I said there's there's a lot going on at the, at the surface level in terms of donors and campaign positions and campaign strategy and the way they're behaving in public. There's a lot that is weird about this campaign thus far. But there is one last thing in terms of the weirdness of this campaign that I think is actually quite serious. Um, you probably heard this weekend that um, Donald Trump told an audience on Friday night that if they vote for him this November, if, if, if he's voted back into office this November, they will never have to vote again. Yeah. He told an audience on Friday to, quote, get out and vote just this time. Yeah. He said after this time, quote, you won't have to do it anymore. You won't have to vote anymore. He said, quote, in four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good, and you're not going to have to vote. Yep. Now, this is not the first time Trump has told the campaign audience that they will never have to vote again once they vote him back in this time. And that is as alarming as it sounds for all the reasons that you immediately think it is, right? I mean, he, he's positing this like this is a happy thing. Oh, joy, never having the burden of voting again, right? The point of democracy is that we vote all the time. All the time. And we like it. That's how we decide what happens in our country. He's promising his followers that he'll end all of that. And it just, it, it's exactly what you think it is. But let me also point out something more strange, which has been happening at the same time and it hasn't had as much attention. The day before Trump made those remarks on Friday, on Friday he said, you're never going to have to vote again after you vote for me this one time. The day before that, on Thursday last week, he didn't say that people wouldn't have to vote anymore once he was elected this November. Now, the day before that, on Thursday, he told his supporters, not that they're not going to have to vote again, but that they don't have to vote this time. That they don't need to vote for him this November. My instruction, we don't need the votes. I have so many votes. My instruction, we don't need the votes. I have so many votes. He said that on Thursday last week. And it turns out this is something, when you look, he says this all the time now. But My instruction, we don't need the votes. I have so many votes. We don't need votes. I tell my people, I don't need any votes. We got all the votes we need. I don't need votes. We don't need votes. We got more votes than anybody's ever had. If you don't have to vote, don't worry about voting. The voting, we got plenty of votes. Don't worry about voting. Of all the weirdness around this campaign, this is a truly strange thing to tell people, right? Don't vote. I don't need your vote. I don't want your vote. I mean, all the surface level weirdness is, you know, worth noting. Having a new position on literally anything you can think of as soon as any random rich guy tells you to, that's a weird thing. Picking the eccentric billionaire's intern for your running mate, even though you apparently had no idea who he was or what a disaster he is on television, all of this is weird. But telling voters, do not bother to vote for me, it doesn't matter if you do, I don't need your votes. That is a thing that should prick up your ears. Because what that means is that he doesn't think he needs to win the vote to win the election. He doesn't think he needs to win the election in order to take power. He thinks something other than votes is going to determine whether or not he gets back in the White House. 
at Rolling Stone today, they profile 70 different election officials who have been put into position in the swing states of Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania, who are election denialists, committed election denialists. Officials that have been put in place in all of those swing states to make sure that election results, no matter what they are, do not get certified in those states this year. Quote, at least 22 of these election officials have already refused or delayed certification processes in recent elections. According to Democratic election lawyer Mark Elias, quote, I think we are going to see mass refusals to certify the election in November. Quote, Republicans are counting on not just that they can disrupt the election in big counties. They're counting on the fact that if they don't certify in several small counties, you can't certify statewide results. 70 officials in place across just the swing states. For all the surface level weird behavior and language and strange choices and incoherence and odd donors in the Republican campaign, the serious core at the heart of it is that they are not planning on the vote being counted as normal. They are not counting on the election results being tallied as normal. They are not counting on the vote. And in fact, Trump is now repeatedly saying the vote will not matter. He doesn't even want your vote. The Republicans are counting on the election results not being certified. Thereby creating chaos in Washington around the results. Just like 2020, right? Just like January 6, 2021. Except this time with no Mike Pence in the way. And with Republican officials already in place in multiple states saying, yeah, you may not get any sort of official vote. The weirdness of this campaign is astonishing 99 days out. The dislocation from real campaigning, though, the dislocation from actually asking asking people for their votes, that means something. It means they are not trying to win this thing in a normal way. So 99 days out, as Democrats stand up what, by all accounts, looks like a juggernaut traditional campaign under Kamala Harris, are they prepared for this level of weirdness after the votes are cast? Are they ready for what's coming? Here is the article from Rolling Stone. I highly suggest you just put the title into the into the Google machine and it'll bring up the article and then I suggest that you read it. Mm -hmm. And then what I plan to do is I plan to email this article along with a link to Rachel Maddow's segment to Brad Raffsenberger mm -hmm, and Brian Kemp. They're over the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let them know that I see them. And I suggest that you all do the same. Whichever state you represent, we see you. Put a spotlight on them. Let them know that we see them and we will not allow them to steal our votes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to email Jamie Harrison, the DNC chairman, and let him know of this, which I'm sure he already knows, and that they need to get prepared. They're always in defense mode instead of putting things in place to stop this kind of shit from happening. That's the Democrats. That's the Democrats. Okay, this is what's going on. The, the coup attempt is continuing. Yeah, and we're going to have to stop them. Point blank period. Looks like I need to add Merrick Garland to my list of emails. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all later.